Hello, mouthpiece fans. I have a client who sent me this Barry Sachs mouthpiece. It's a Charles Bay Mulligan model. It's marked 7N, 706N. Measures at a, about a 107 tip opening. Um, it's very nice, but he's trying to use this on a Con, vintage Con 12M Barry Sachs. And a lot of players have problems with mouthpieces um, uh, needing shank extensions to play in tune on that horn. You can buy yourself a neck, a new neck, or uh, there are some guys that'll make removable extensions, or, or you know, if you know someone with a lathe, you can get one made up on a lathe or a 3D printer. But um, the way I do it, if you contact me, is uh, not removable, but um, an extension using a piece of tubing. He wants it an inch and a quarter longer than, a, than this Barry Sachs mouthpiece. So uh, I either use aluminum or uh, uh, brass tubing. This one is um, just a little smaller than an inch diameter. Um, and it's, you know, like a 16 inch wall. It's probably, let's see what it's at. Inch and a, it's an inch and an eighth on the OD. So, and the mouthpiece is just over an inch. So there's an interference fit right now, but what I'll do is on a belt sander, I'll take this down. It ain't gonna be pretty, but you're not gonna see it because this entire shank, uh, extension is gonna slip over the shank, and then I'll show you how we fill in on the inside. Um, now to fill up the inside, uh, you need a core. Now the inside, it's a tapered bore on this end, but the end of it right here is measuring at about 720. So I looked around my shop, what that I have, and I had a piece of electrical conduit. Um, forget what they sell, this probably is called half inch conduit, but it measured on the outside around 700. So yeah, it's right on 700. So I cut a piece of that, and roughed it up a little bit. Yeah, you don't have to rough it up, but I had a uh, weld seam on it that I wanted to smooth out. So I did that on the belt sander. But this is going to go on the inside, okay? And then this is going to slip over on the outside. And then I'll attach, you know, use a 5-minute epoxy. I have a, this one's Gorilla, but you can use DevCon. Uh, clear 5-minute epoxy that's useful to have around. Then the special product... <coughs> <clears throat> that I'm going to use to fill in for the um, hard rubber extension we need is this black potting epoxy. I've used a number of different materials over the years. JB Weld um, used to be soupier and it would work, but lately I've been getting a, a stiffer JB Weld. Um, I don't know if they changed the mix or, or what, but uh, but this is better because it's thin. It takes overnight, but... Um, you know, this mixes with a syringe that's disposable, and this is made by MG Chemicals. I got this off of Amazon. Comes with one mixing tip, then you gotta buy some more if you're gonna get more than one use out of the uh, syringe. Um, and these have like a, a zigzag interior that uh, the two parts of the epoxy mix with each other and come out. And uh, I've tried reusing these, but that's pretty much impossible. I tried blowing them out, but it's not worth it. If you're gonna get more than one use, you gotta buy a bag of extra, extra tips to go on it. So um, that's the game plan. Uh, we'll go to the belt sander next, and I'll take this down to get a fit. Okay, here's a uh, an expensive one inch wide belt sander, 30 inch belt. Got this from Harbor Freight. Uh, really, uh, I've gone through, this is my second one, I guess. Uh, belt on here is an 80 grit, fairly rough. So um, that's what I'm gonna use to start taking the shank down. Pretty much jam that all the way onto there. 
You can uh, also use a file. You know, I may have some high spots on here, but uh, I gotta take one more shot with this. Okay, that slid pretty easy. So we're in business. Now the epoxy. Okay, open up your epoxy syringe. Squeeze out an equal part of each. Best you can. I like to use these sticks to mix, mix it up. You can use a piece of wood or whatever. Usually this is a little smoother than this, but it's getting near the end of the cartridge. So it's kind of lumpy, but it'll work fine. So you goop some of it up, and you paint the outside of the shank. Depending on the fit, if it's a tight fit, you don't have to go all the way down because putting the shank on will kind of smear it down there. Yeah, pull some of it down into it because it'll just ooze out if you get too much on there. Okay, then we get it. See, I got a bead of epoxy at the end, which can be your friend. It's like caulking to hold it in there. And so if you get too much, you can get a wet wipey or something to smear it around. But I'm not going to touch it because I have a natural bead there now, which looks neat, and it's not messy. So we're going to leave it like that for about five minutes, let that set up. Okay, having one of these pan vices makes this handy. Yeah. Get it clamped up in a vertical position. Um, most of the time I take a piece of cellophane like uh, around the core, but this is so tight uh, to up to the uh, correct interior that I need, I'm just going to put a release agent, you know, some petroleum jelly on it. Um, if it's not the right size, I wrap it with masking tape and then I put a, a, a wrap a piece of this, uh, you know, like cellophane around it. But I think this will work. I'd like the uh, interior to be a little tighter than I need and then I can sand it out to the right right shape. Just kind of eyeball it up to try to get it in the center. Now the potting compound. to see it loading up and we're there hopefully I don't run out
a little thinner than like breakfast syrup. Whoops, some on the outside. Which I'll, when I'm all done, I'll belt sand the outside. See it coming up. <laughs> it's near the surface now, and I'm almost out. I've used this like twice before, maybe so. Gotta do some tapping for bubbles. Helps the bubbles rise. Then again, if you get a trap bubble in there, nobody's gonna know. Most of the time it's inside the wall. So I made this shank extension maybe a, a sixteenth of an inch longer than asked for. I'll just shorten it after it sets up. It pretties up the end. I hope I can get that out. Take some plier work. I see little bubbles coming up. Maybe I'll give you a closer look. Can't really see the bubbles, but. that's set up until tomorrow okay next day let's see what we have okay, I'm gonna try to pull the core out now it's not tapered so this may not go terribly smoothly Not feeling any cooperation here. That's really stuck in there pretty good. I gonna have to think about this, how to get this out, but it's it's gonna take a, a lot more force than I imagined. Actually, the uh, conduit is start starting to bend under the. Uh, pressure of my pliers, so uh, stay tuned. Okay, after playing with it for a few minutes, and grabbing some other tools, needed a soft way to grab the shank, so this is like a uh, uh, oil filter wrench kind of an idea. So I, I put this strap on here, and then I got some plumber's pliers here, I was able to get some leverage and, and pull these two together, and I managed to get this to kind of slip like an eighth of an inch or so. And um, now I think, you know, I can work it free from here. So it's starting to come out now, see? Okay. A little bit of Vaseline in there. Petroleum jelly. Now the uh, actual diameter on the end now measures at 0 0.704, 709 in two, two directions. I wanted that no bigger than 720, so now we got something to work with. So I've got to trim the end 
and then decide if I'll clean up clean up the uh, petroleum jelly out of the middle. Looks like there might be, you know, a little bit of the uh, potting compound might have leaked into the uh, chamber bore. Um, can't see it from uh, on the video, but I could see a little bit of like a, a seam in there, which wouldn't hurt anything because I don't think, you know, the neck cork isn't going anywhere, but I can reach in there with the tool and clean that up. And I may have to sand out the board just a little bit because uh, 10 thousandths of an inch can make a difference whether it fits right or not. So um, first I'm going to trim this up on the belt sander. These change belts pretty easily if you leave the cover off. that opened up which I could fill those in or just leave them alone or sand a little more but I, more of them might open up inside so you got to remember this has to be functional so being pretty is a second secondary let me try a little finer belt this was my again my 80 belt switch to the 120 there's an arrow on these is what I'm looking for it's a recommended direction of motion inside the sander. So you can see I was doing some cosmetic finishing. I'm going to leave this as a brushed finish on there, but there's some, some nicks and pieces of glue that I gotta clean off first. Finer belts. This says 240 MX. I've had these for a while, so I don't remember exactly where they came from. But you can do a search for belts. This is pretty fine. Every paper kind of a belt. looking pretty good. I might do some hand sanding to kind of detail where the glue line is a little, maybe some steel wool work. Um, now I'm going to check the, uh, the bore and uh, adjust that a little. Okay, I'm going to do just a little light sanding with this uh, sanding drum here, 5 8 diameter.
Still getting like 715 across. 715 that way. more like 730 now so that's that's done and I reached this way down in there and got that little bit of a ridge that I thought was in there and I'm, I'm gonna use a, a abrasive rubber tip to do some sanding inside smooth it up a little bit Still a little bit of gunk in there from the dust attaching to the petroleum jelly, but I'll uh, clean all that out. Bench, I did a little bit of steel wool, 4-0 steel wool on the outside of this. Now I'm going to go on the inside using my sanding stick as a pusher, kind of wrap, wrap a little bit of steel wool around it and get inside here. dust inside there. It's going to take some some washing and some rubbing, but I think cork grease will, over time, take out some of the irregularities that I feel with the finger. Let's see if we can see anything with... Come on, light. There we go. It's not real easy to see on the video, but yeah, some minor roughness in there, but the cork is pretty forgiving. You know, the original mouthpiece was an inch shank, and now it's an inch and a quarter, but longer than that. Um, where's my scale? Here it is. So I still came out with like that's two and a quarter, pretty much exactly aluminum length. So, you know, it may be a sixteenth longer since that didn't match all the way up here. Again, uh, to get a get it pretty in this area, I can go around with a little bit more steel wool to kind of scuff up the uh, glue bead on there evenly so it looks symmetric. But, uh, you know, the key to doing this is not overwork it because you might mess things up. You know, the we still got the tip hasn't been hit. Yeah, it's another problem. All this force that you're doing, to try to get the core out and whatever. If you slip, mouthpiece goes flying. You're gonna chip a tip. So, um, for safety, I probably should have uh, maybe put something and taped something over the tip to to protect it. But I guess I'm pretty sure of my abilities. So, being how there's two little voids here, I'll probably smear that with a little bit of black epoxy I have um, just to kind of get rid of those two little divots and then we're good to go. A little bit more fine sanding around the edge. But, uh, there you have it. Okay, let's see if we can get Oop, yeah, there's just a little bit left in this cartridge. What do you know? Yeah, it's not very thick, but I'll mix it up. It sure is black. I'll 
I'll try to, yeah, it's probably not the right tool for this. It's a little goopy, isn't it? Then I uh, need to get something pointy. This needle spring. Get down in there and kind of make sure it fills the bubble. Can't even see where the bubble is, but try to feel around for it. Otherwise. Okay. Let that dry again. Got to be a bunch of hours and then I'll See if I could sand that smooth and get a pristine end for no reason at all. <laughs> okay, one last shot. I did try to touch up that end a little bit, but I didn't make a whole lot of progress. But you know, I did do a little more steel wool and some polish. But uh, let's see, it came out pretty good.